What's up, everybody? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. We're going to dive into the markets today as we are rallying up a little bit this morning in the NASDAQ, the S&P, after some strong earnings. Um, we had a bit of a follow-through day on Friday of last week, and we're seeing the market action reflect that at the moment. But let's go ahead and dive right in. So the S&P this morning, up 33 points. Uh, so we have continued our upward move. This was the level that we looked at yesterday for a potential breakout trade um, in the S&P. And then we had a confirmation level above us. And that breakout level didn't happen until later in the day. But we did get the move later in the day. And it's con continued to run in the overnight hours. And so when I look at this on a four hour, we are obviously in a confirmed uptrend at this point. One thing to just be a little bit cautious of and be aware is that we are approaching the 61.8 retracement of the strong move down. Um, if I throw that 61.8 retracement on here, the only thing that we uh, that we have kind of upcoming is we're sitting right at that 61.8 retracement. So just be aware if we do start to see some market weakness, it could just be that there is you know a tremendous amount of computerized selling off of a move like this, and we could see some price. Um, you know, a little bit of a little bit of stall up there, but in reality, there's no supply levels to do that uh, that are really, really strong. And so, remember that all of our supply levels above us have to be confirmation entries at this point. Matter of fact, I'm going to remove that 15 minute one because I don't think it's going to be as valid um, heading up. Now, um, after the breakout, we would look and see where's our next reversal trade, and it would be a retest back into this area that would make for a good reversal. Um, if we retest the breakout that happened yesterday's market uh, at the end of the day in the market. Uh, now, the NASDAQ was really the better breakout uh, as we had more room to roam. And we are closing in on this pivot high in the NASDAQ. But what are we getting here in front of it? The kiss of death, basing before a level. So with that basing before the level, that uh, that's going to prompt me to remove that drawing. Uh, I'm going to remove, I typically want to remove the basing before the level. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the smaller time frame, 15-minute chart, and look right inside of the rally up and actually go to this itty-bitty-witty uh, wick over wick level that we have here where oftentimes those, those levels that get retested become pretty good zones. Now, I'm not sure that we're going to make it down there today, especially since we're already up 200 and something points in the NASDAQ. So if you're still long from the breakout, Hold it. Hold the long from the breakout and allow it to continue to run higher. Um, the Russell was also a breakout trade that we had identified. Uh, we did get a breakout here in the Russell. The rut was a little bit more wonky because we we got um, a little bit of a break and then a whoop sold right off. And then we broke uh, later in the morning before then popping higher. So the Russell move is a little bit more suspect. Um And I don't know that I like a, a lot of these reversal points in the Russell like I do in the other markets. So um, when we look at weakness, the Russell just popped above the prior swing high. So it's the weakest of these markets. The NASDAQ is the strongest. The Russell is the weakest. And certainly the NASDAQ is being buoyed by strong earnings from Apple uh, excuse me, from well, from Apple last week and then from Google as well. And so Google and Apple earnings have, have really been helping to propel and to drive this market um, after what was what was considered a follow-through day on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think they, the day was Friday. Um, and so, you know, what, what would the next entry or the next opportunity be would be to get long on a pullback um, – on these markets, but you also may want to wait for breakouts. So those are our equity markets for today. Let's take a look at some energies and metals right quick. Um, looking at energies and metals, crude oil, man, we're just waiting for crude oil to pop above this 88.76. We've not done that yet. Um, I think that that there's a clear path up to the weekly supply area up here, but we still need the breakout above 88.76, and it's not happened yet. So I've had no trades in oil um, that have really been entry criteria, entry worthy for the past few days and still don't have one. Um, so, but we're getting there. We're closing in. We're, you know, it's, we're like, we're like Richard Marks right here waiting for you. I'm showing my age there. Um, next is gold. Uh, so in gold, we, we have on the hourly chart, we're in between these 15 minute levels. We touched this 15 minute level once moved away. We came close to it in the overnight. 
didn't get in. So I'm actually going to remove it. Uh, when we come that close to a level that many times, I don't believe it. I don't believe it prudent to to leave the level on the charts. Um, we've got some selling pressure up in here, and our four hour trend is you know lower swing lows, lower swing highs at this point. And so I think you're still better off on shorts. Um, although we did put in a pretty good 15 minute demand area right here. If you want to give this a shot, I wouldn't be mad at you for jumping in on this little 15 minute area of demand. Um, if that's something that you, you think is a, is a good opportunity, knowing that it's got to be a confirmation entry simply because we are in a confirmed downtrend still at this point, And this would make our, um, our probability score a bit lower. Uh, natural gas, uh, you know, NAC gas, we had this 15-minute supply level, came up into it yesterday, didn't quite make it above the, the pivot, um, and then sold down and got a little move away, about a two-to-one move away, but then it just kind of popped through it. Natural gas continues its surge. Um, we could see if, if, if we fall off of this level here and then we get another opportunity for a breakout. I would still need a third touch. I do not have three touches at this point. Caught me once, caught me twice. I need a pullback from here and then some basing to get me a third touch um, in natural gas. Uh, in bonds, currencies, those markets, I will tell you, a little bit disappointed in the bond movement. I really expected this bond movement to continue to, to rally higher. Yesterday, we got a big sell-off in the bonds early in the day, um, which, which caused our breakout trade to fail. So that would be a failed breakout trade um, in the bonds. Um, and now I would look a bit lower to see if we break down. So uh, that would be kind of the area for some sort of a potential breakdown trade. Euro, the euro yesterday. So we looked at this euro level uh, as a, a potential entry where we had a, a little bit of basing before a nice move up. Price gave us a retest on that area. We did get a very nice move away from there. So hopefully some of you were able to capitalize on that. The 15-minute supply level up here has already been touched once, so it needs to be a confirmation. So we blew right through there. But hopefully some of you guys were able to capitalize on the retest area right there. Certainly we've traded to the bottom of that, so let's remove this. Um, it's now DTM, dead to me. And so I would need to come to this area right here, which is also formed at a really strong time of day for a bit of a retest. So that's my level in the euro. Uh, I want to move over to cryptos real quick, and then I got a stock of the day. Uh, Bitcoin is really trying to rear its head back up above this 39,000. We're basing here in front of the level. This could make for a decent breakout. If you took the breakout yesterday, because we did get a breakout uh, at some point during the day, uh, our stop, your stop at the would have to be below here, but one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, you had not been stopped out, but it also hadn't moved your direction. So telling you, you should probably get out. I think that breakout is still valid. It's just not happened as of yet. Um, and same thing in Ether. You've got a potential for a breakout and price to rally a bit higher. So uh, both, of these both of these markets look to be forming a bit of a base. Um, but I am seeing a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of strength as we, as we rally up. Notice in Ether, we've closed on the high the last couple of days. Um, so that's, that's helping to kind of buoy price a little bit as well. Um, stock of the day. I want to take a look at Fang Energy. Uh, Diamondback Energy, excuse me, Fang, uh, and what I'm really looking at is more of a as an investor. Going back on a weekly chart, we are sitting just below the all-time high, right? So we're sitting just below the all-time high. We had a really big sell-off. I mean, this thing went from 140 down to 14, um, and we're now we're back up around 140. Now you say, well, why would I buy an all-time high? Well. I'd rather buy an all-time high than, than sell one. That's for damn sure. And yesterday, we had a bullish engulfing candle. Now, that bullish engulfing candle, um, if I throw my volume on there, that's a bullish engulfing candle on increased volume than the prior day, which means we gapped down yesterday um, and closed near the high. So a bullish engulfing candle on increased volume is oftentimes going to be a good reversal signal. Uh, with an opportunity for price to continue to trade higher. In the pre-market today, we are trading down just a little bit, so I would wait to get higher than yesterday's high before giving you an entry. Now, be aware that we do have earnings coming up on here in a couple of weeks, but I think that this could serve as a, uh, as a pretty good opportunity for a long. We've looked at this one in the past and gotten some decent reversals, 
Um, one thing that, to pay attention to on here is our implied volatility uh, is right in the middle of the range, and so it's not a, uh, a super high vol stock, although I, I think we may see rising vol as we head into, uh, as we head into earnings. Historically, this isn't a big spiker for volatility on earnings. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see that there's huge volatility spikes on earnings for this one, and it doesn't really move much on earnings either. So uh, I'm not overly concerned with, in this stock with the earnings coming up. Uh, I do think, though, that you could get some pretty decent movement out of FANG. So, all right, everybody, well, that's all I have for today. If you guys have any questions, as always, give me a heads up. Support at TradersArmy.com. I will talk to you soon. See ya. Hey, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the only way the computers know that you're actually alive and really care. And go to TradersArmy.com today to learn a bit more. And if you want to see some of our other videos, click here in the box.